answer true or false? Again, sometimes my thoughts assume the form of a giant insect. False. If you want to play the piano well, you have to practice. True. Large furry animals crawl on my face every night while I sleep. True. I have a dog. Sometimes I can move things with my mind. You can't make me do this. Honey, sit down. I'm just trying to help. You're not my mother, you know. Rachel, I'm trying to be your friend. Don't let go of me! Hello, welcome to Cheap Scares, the horror movie podcast that's got an ass stamped BP, Bulldog Property. Amen. <laughs> I'm David Schneider. And I'm Sybil Arnett. Why did, uh, I, I stutter all the time. Why did that one come out clean? Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, we sure watched a movie. Who boy. Um... We don't usually do these because this is the horror genre, but maybe skip this week if you have anything uh, traumatic related to sexual assault, because boy, it keeps coming up in this one. Yeah, it's a little, uh, it, it's a very edgy tale. Uh, a lot, a lot, uh, it, it was, it was the turn of the century, so th there was a lot of, they don't do this in movies. And so... A lot of just pretty awful things just suddenly coming up out of nowhere. It, always on a dime. That's the only reason I threw in the warning, because we're going to be talking about pleasant discussion, pleasant discussion, pleasant discussion, and then that plot. And then just, uh, it's just, it's just uh, uh, we're having a, a great day, and then a suicide. That sort of thing. So, you know. Yeah. We're talking about the rage, Carrie 2. It's, yeah, it's, we, we <laughs> he took uh, Stephen King's novel, um, added a two. It, it, this is absolutely a sequel that did not need to get made. Oh. I really wonder even why it did get made to begin with. Much less, like, 23 years later a lot of decisions were made for this film and um yeah you have to make decisions in order to make a movie this do, you, you don't just like accidentally drop a rage carry too no no but this is one of those times where a lot of people had to say yes to a lot of things with no one going, I don't think this is a good idea at any point in the process. <laughs> or if they did, it was the wrong points. Yeah. So somebody going, hey, we need a little bit of comic relief at this murder party. How about, how about the, the nerdy guy from American Pie that nobody likes? Uh, how about he stands outside and says a funny joke cool i did actually laugh at that bit that i did I, I also laughed at several parts that i really d d d logically and morally should not have yeah that last chunk got a lot of laughs out of me <laughs> uh so yeah the movie begins uh okay first thing the soundtrack of this movie is abysmal. And I, I'm not even talking about, like, the licensed songs, which are 98% uh, alternative rock. Like, like, the way those were used was pretty bad, but, like, I have a very high tolerance for alt-rock. Yeah. I love me some alt-rock. This is way too late into the 90s for a couple of these bands. Fear Factory, Typo Negative, <laughs> and Sack all probably should not have been contracted in 1999. Yeah, the, well, it's, uh, somebody somebody liked them, and therefore the main character of our movie likes them. Um, but the 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 real problem I think is uh the original score, which you can you can uh look it up. It's on it's online. You can listen to the original score for The Rage Carry 2. 
it is just straight up PlayStation One MIDI. Like if if they told me, if if somebody said that they, this movie was literally sequenced and recorded on a Net Eurose, I would believe it. The sound effects are interesting because there's a few places where it's like, all right, this is homage or blatant theft from the original movie. Uh huh. Yes. And then there's moments where telekinetic powers have the sound of the shotgun from Doom. <laughs> well, by by the time the uh, by by the time the party rolls around, it's pretty much every sound effect. Yes. This this is a remake of Carrie, so of course there is a party with a lot of murder. Um. Did I just say it's a remake? Did I just say that out loud? It pretty much is. Because the, the, the phrase that I'm actually looking for is soft reboot. Which I, I, don't, I don't know if that was like really a, uh, a common term back then, but that, that is what this feels like. Is this like, well, let's, uh, let's start, let, let's do this again, and we'll, we'll acknowledge that the other thing uh, also exists, but maybe we can make this like a, a, a bigger franchise. Maybe we can have... <laughs> Uh, the Fury, Carry 3, I don't know. I think the only thing in, and it would be in horror, that had already done this by this point was the Halloween continuity was starting to get real bad. Uh, sure. I, yeah, Halloween 4 also probably fits as a, a soft reboot. Um, but ha Halloween is, all, that one also got just got weird. I still haven't seen five or six, and every time I've looked at like a summary of that, I'm like, really? Oh yeah, they they tried to be Silent Hill at that point. It got weird, especially because four was just like it was just like we're making a normal slasher movie again. Mm hmm. Yeah, we're gonna put this. We're gonna put the druid curse behind us. We're going back to Michael Myers. What? <laughs> druid, but behind us? You mean ahead of us, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's let's film this entire movie. Hey, let's uh let's just d r make Halloween six again entirely. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> did they ever actually officially release that other cut of Halloween six, or is it just do you just still have to find it somewhere? I don't know if it was ever a DVD extra or anything. The rights got so weird around that time with Halloween that I'm unsure what's official. Okay. So anyway, the movie begins with uh, um, just awful, awful synth uh, piano just plinking away uh, in a very spooky way. Uh, it's never a good sign when in the opening credits, I'm already taking notes like who bootlegged the Diablo font and <laughs> somebody legitimately went by John Doe in this film. And I looked it up and that's that's correct. <laughs> Never a good sign. <laughs> Maybe if it's possible, it wasn't just for this film. He does have an entire career by that name, but let me tell you, it stands <laughs> out all of a sudden. Uh, there is a woman who is uh, painting the room, sort of. She's not very good at it. Uh, she's saying vaguely religious -y stuff and also stay out of here and she's my daughter. And uh, basically, she has taken a giant, a large, uh, a large paintbrush, which like the size that you would use to paint a wall or something. Mm -hmm. And she's just painting a line across the room in red. Just, just a st like a straight line across everything, including the the window and the uh, blind, not blinds, um, the curtains. curtains. I think she gets a lamp at one point, too. She gets a lamp that just gets all over her Virgin Marys. <laughs> and uh, there's a little girl with a uh, with a basset hound approximately her size. <laughs> and uh, she's concerned. Occasionally she's concerned in black and white. And finally she runs up and just says, Mommy, could you just can we just go play in my room? At which point... <laughs> Uh, her mother just like gently baps her in the face with the paintbrush, which is supposed to be like a shocking moment, but 
they're they're not gonna like harm a real small child so it's just like the gentlest tap this movie doesn't have the stones of the original on a lot of levels true and that kind of undercuts what it's going for yeah no it it found different stones and threw them at you (laughs) telekinetically but we basically smash cut from this to mom getting taken away because yeah no kidding Yes, uh, an ambulance has arrived, and she is. Uh, they have come to take her away. Ho ho, he he, ha ha. To the funny farm. <laughs> I know the song. And uh, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. I I, I expected you would. <laughs> um, and the the sheriff's there, uh, trying to comfort the girl. I I think this is a different sheriff than the one we see later. Yes. Uh. Boy, this this movie is bad at introducing characters. <laughs> so she she has she uh she yells something about how she has no dad. Uh, there's no dad for to come take care of her, and so she runs into the house, and uh, all the windows and doors are slamming because telekinesis, because Carrie, and finally she just hides in the closet with the dog. And the Falcom music transitions into modern day. And now they listen to heavy metal. It's a very strange transition because in this scene, she's in black and white. And then we just start spinning the camera around from above. And the child turns into a full color teenage Rachel Lang, our protagonist. It almost feels like the black and white shots in this movie were a mistake. Like, they overexposed the film or something and just decided to roll with it. So... Because it is almost completely random. I looked into this. I was trying to figure out if there were any comments by Stephen King about this. I just wanted to know his take, and I found some production information. Okay. About two weeks into this being filmed, the director just abruptly quit... (laughs) <laughs> and the the one who came on to finish it had to start over and they said they threw out a lot of footage. But I definitely wonder if some of the black and white or random effects that don't match up like that and don't really come to anything were just old footage from the first try. Uh, it could be. There's a, like some of it is in uh, like uh, sh- scenes that have effects like um. Like, uh, there's a, a almost home invasion later on, and a lot of that is in black and white. So it, 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 may, not, it may not be that simple. It might not, but that's basically the only place it appears after a certain point. So she lives in a, a house which is uh, disgusting and poor. Uh, she has uh, foster parents who hang out in, uh, in their underwear because they're gross and poor. They're also real stereotypical assholes. Yep, the her foster mom is just kind of ju- just kind of cranky all the time. And her foster dad is like normal, normal, normal and that he just yells at you. The bit that stuck with me is when the foster mom is going, you know, hey, your mom's getting better, she might get out soon, and foster dad just goes well, what are we going to do to make up that 300 bucks a month? Yes, that, that uh, when Rachel, Rachel, our main character, when she hears that, uh, she just runs out of the scene. Which, what do you really do at that point? But yeah, this is, uh, the movie just keeps on telling us that she's poor, even though she like, I, I don't know, I think she dresses pretty stylishly, <laughs> personally. <laughs> it's like, it, she looks fine. Yep. Like I'm, I'm not one to judge, really. But she doesn't. She's not like going to school wearing a bag. She is dressed in the hottest of topic clothing. Sure, sure. But th- that's not that. That's not zero money. That's a little money. Well, she she has a job. I can definitely see how she buys five different band T shirts and some wrist warmers. <laughs> yeah, and then we meet her friend. Uh who gets a name about 20 seconds before she dies later. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's Mina Savari. 
and she, oh oh my gosh her hair <laughs> yes they uh they really uh they teased that out as much as i i would assume contractually allowed uh it is very stra- scraggly and you know she's to- considered ugly and unpopular but like it's mina savari <laughs> who is, uh, in 1999, who is, uh, let's go with not ugly. That's an understatement. A little bit. Yeah. A lot of miscasting was done in this film. There's a character who will show up about an hour in as an antagonist who has big I'm the nerdy cute vibes. She feels like she would have been better in this role if you were trying to do a Hollywood ugly character. Sure, sure. You're not talking about the glasses girl, right? I am. Okay. She, well, she was she was there through the movie. She just didn't didn't get a name for the first hour. <laughs> well, the 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 mean girls don't really do it. They they're in the background of scenes, but they're just not characters for roughly an hour. That yes, yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> they just come in out of left field. Um. So yes, uh, the uh, Mina Savari is playing Lisa. Is her name? We will eventually find that out. And then uh, nobody says her name until she dies, pretty much. And then they can't stop. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> um, uh. So she she's uh, she's 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 doing the whole oh do I look different because I got the sex glow? I I, I sexed last night. Oh, wow. Who was it with? Oh, you'll see. She's going to bring him to lunch. At which point <laughs> they <laughs> they uh, just they both have like little heart tattoos on their arms and they thumb each other's heart tattoo and go best blood. And these best, are best blood. <laughs> these are pretty ornate little tattoos for teenagers. Who sat yeah. down with these poor kids and got this done together? I don't like, know. It's full color. It's shaded. It's got a lot of line work. Uh. <laughs> I, I, I don't know tattoos. They're not big, at least. Well, not yet. Huh. <laughs> and the, then... It, then the one of the most amazing shots in the movie is this overhead panning shot of the school, and it is like pure distilled '90s TV high school. There's there's cheerleaders, uh, doing their thing, and one of these cheerleaders is our uh, our main mean girl Tracy, and mm-hmm. they attract our attention to her by uh, she's not wearing a bra, mm. um, so. Uh, so th- that's happening. It continues to pass along and there's p- people are playing hacky sacks. They're jaywalking. There's like four dudes with guitars. <laughs> uh, it's two different guys skateboarding down the same railing at the same time. <laughs> D- uh, there were, there are some super soakers involved. It's a whole thing. You didn't mention my favorite part. Which is when we cut off the bus, we get random fart ska playing over this entire shot. Yes, I, 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 I wrote Z tier punk, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I just listen to music. I don't really identify it. So if if it was ska, I could not tell you. <laughs> Too many trumpets. Sure. I I didn't know no doubt was ska until like a couple of years ago. So you know. If you only knew them from other popular stuff, you really wouldn't know that. So I get it. We end this shot on here's someone you haven't thought about in years. Zachary Ty Bryan of Home Improvement. Yes, the the jocks, the football jocks are there and they all have underbites. Mm. And they are playing a game. Ugh. So the game is... uh. Did they have sex with as many girls as possible? The more girls, the more points. How many points is that chick over there? You mean that fat one? She is not fat, by the way. They argue about that. 
I did take a screenshot of the rules of the game. Would you like to hear them? Sure, sure. I did notice uh, way down at the bottom that it said uh, point for eating pussy, but the guy's like hand was in the way. I, I wasn't sure if it was like plus one or minus one. Go ahead. So game lasts the entire duration of the football season. Winner is the one with the highest point total over the course of the game. Winner receives one keg of the beer of their choice to be purchased by other players. Wow, that sounds like a really good prize for this. I know, right? Point values are assigned by the following criteria. A. Blowjobs are worth only one point. B. Swallowing gives you an extra point. C. To remain in the competition, you must score at least five points per month. D. Add one point yeah. for each article of clothing kept from the girl. E. If witnessed by other members, add, and it cuts off here, points. And then beneath that is the one that's never on screen fully, which is something one point for eating pussy, something point for exotic location. Love it. There was a... They did a thing like this in uh, one episode of Veronica Mars, and in that one, most of them were lying. So it, 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 is, it is unclear how, uh, how well they keep track of, uh, let, uh, let's say, ha how well the, the goalkeepers are able to keep track of these sorts of things, or if it's just, you know, self-reported mostly. So... This film wasn't originally Carrie 2. It was called The Curse, and it was borrowing from an actual incident like this that took place in California, where a bunch of jocks basically played this game in real life, and there were uh, some disastrous consequences for everyone involved. And then partway into production, they decided, how about this becomes Carrie 2? But they kept that whole plot based on a true story. Sure. Just just thought I'd give you that extra little spice of what a bad idea this was. Yeah, it was it was a terrible, terrible idea. Mm-hmm. Right, so uh Rachel and Lisa walk by. Uh Zach Zachary Ty Bryan of home improvement fame. <laughs> uh and let me uh let me just uh Read, uh, read something out here of uh, what Zachary Ty Bryan's been up to recently. Huh. Which is, um, in October 2020, Bryan was held on several charges, including felony strangul strangulation, misdemeanor charges of fourth degree assault, and interfering with making a police report after an apparent argument with his girlfriend in their argument, er, in their, I'm sorry, in their apartment in Lane County, Oregon. In February of 2021, Brian pleaded, pleaded guilty to two of the charges, while six others were dismissed. Uh, so Wikipedia is doing the thing that it uh, loves to do, where it uh, places two things right next to each other to make an, uh, uh, a connection between them. Uh, he did not plead guilty to felony strangulation. Uh, that was not one of the charges that stuck. But it was it's still very bad. Extremely bad. Uh let me see here. Menacing and assault in the fourth degree constituting domestic violence. So don't look up what uh what people uh from uh from things you liked twenty years ago, uh don't look up what they're doing. Also, don't get involved with Tim Allen. Sure. He's a coke-dealing snitch, and you will regret it. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, at the end so, of the uh, scene... <laughs> so, uh... So, yeah, um... <laughs> boy, th there's gonna be a lot of derails in this one. Um, so... W uh, d one of them uh, looks at Lisa and calls her a coyote date. Which is when you would rather gnaw off your arm than wake up the ugly girl you just slept slept with. Yeah. Which is mean. Again, Mina Savari. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like she, she, all they all they did was like mess up her hair. Yeah, it's a humid day. 
Oh, darn. And the the thing that happens here is just this completely wild script shortcut, mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, Lisa has a roll of film that she needs developed. And Rachel works at a um, a photo development, uh, a drive through photo developing service. Uh, which, you know, does not exist anymore, but that's <laughs> that's yeah. not my problem with this. My problem is that Rachel just happens to have a receipt book handy. And so she writes a receipt for Lisa. And we need we need this because the cops need to find that receipt uh, in her locker later. But she's going to die today. So we can't actually have her stop by Rachel's work to get that receipt. So we just have to do it here at school, which uh, it uh, just wild. The way everyone knows she works at the photo booth, I feel like she carries that book around just because random people will give her film and then go, can I just give you a 20 and pick it up? <laughs> I guess. I Like, why would she do that? It is very strange. I try not to take my work home and I have a much, much wilder job than doing photo booth uh, development. So I don't know why you would bring that home with you. You're making minimum wage. (laughs) Because the script needed it. Yeah, there's a lot of that. So we go. We get a, a quick scene in class, in English class, where they are discussing Romeo and Juliet because everybody's going to die. Um, Rachel says she doesn't know if she believes in love. As uh, the, cute, the cutest football guy looks at her. Uh, let me see. The, the, we see the glasses girl here whose name is Monica. Uh, it's just for the record <laughs> her name is monica <laughs> that's all she's just she's there to like be a mirror to tracy our main mean girl who goes who would love her but who might jesse the soft one who well the jesse's like well if everybody's separated by death then it's not a tragedy because the only way they could be together was in death the teacher's like, yes, which I I don't agree with that at all, but whatever. <laughs> it's it's definitely a teenage take. Let's put it that way. Yeah, well, the, the teacher loved it. And now it's time for my rant about suicide in movies. Yay. Mm-hmm. OK, so. The g- general uh, overview of the events here is Lisa off screen uh had a conversation with uh with football guy uh Eric we get his name later it's Eric uh, this is the Zachary Ty Bryant character um so she has a conversation with him where he lets her know that she was just a fuck trophy actually and then she immediately goes and uh throws herself off of the roof now uh the, we'll get into the details later because they are very funny. Um, yeah, <laughs> but this whole this is a very, very, very. Uh, t- this is a thing that you really don't see at all in movies anymore, which is the um, everything's fine. A bad thing happens to someone and they commit suicide. That doesn't happen. <laughs> That's not. That's not how this works. That's not how mental illness works. It's just complete nonsense. But there is okay. There is th- there is one thing to this that I do think ends up getting kind of overshadowed in conversations about this sort of thing, mm-hmm. which is that this is in this movie. Uh, this suicide is being portrayed as an a totally unambiguously bad thing this is just straight like it is tacky as hell it is unbelievably blunt but it's also just straight up saying this is a bad thing this was at no point is it trying to imply that uh 
this decision was in any way a good a good thing for anybody to do under these a, any sort of similar circumstances and so that's just kind of all of that and i will take that 1000 times over like um there's a lot of a lot of like well but maybe it was a beautiful thing like um like a, this is a true uh distillation of teenage feeling like a fucking 13 reasons why or like uh what was what, what's that musical called um, dear evan hansen dear evan hansen <laughs> so uh, yeah like so yes, it is it is tacky, it is just in your face, but also just I I can't get mad at it. So I guess while we're on this note, I have a similar bit from a different angle about boy, this was a throwback that I actually found kind of refreshing to revisit in an older film. Okay. And it's now, I don't think the assault bits are amazing, but this is also a movie where teens are horny and it's not played as an American Pie comedy, and it feels like actual things that might resemble some of my own younger life. And it's like, yeah, no, that hits pretty accurately. That was incredibly dumb, but that's what you're doing when you're thinking with the wrong head. Yeah, like I, I, I actually think the, uh, the way they portray the relationship between Carrie to, I'm kidding, between Rachel <laughs> and Jesse is like actually pretty all right. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's like it's simple, it's, but it's you know fairly compelling. They, they, they exist in different worlds, and then a thing happens that just they sort of end up having to talk to each other, and then they actually like t develop. <laughs> But uh, they have a they they find an emotional core that's not not necessarily just to how much they like listening to garbage. Um, <laughs> you also <laughs> noticed that line, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and but yeah, I, I and I think it's pretty good. They do jump like really fast to "I love you," but they also kind of have to because of the script. So. I can't tell how long this is supposed to take place over. There's definitely a a a, 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 a like time gap at one point in the movie. Mhm. Mm like it's it's all, it's all kind of a few days and then there it's just kind of like a big old question mark and then the whole last bit of it takes place over like a day and a half. Yeah. I also want to say I feel like if this movie sliced out one extraneous subplot, and it could be many of them, there are a lot of them, <laughs> this could actually be a pretty tight little B-movie. Sure. It does the character work. It leans in. It's just that by the end, we have one or two too many things going on at once. And they all need to die. <laughs> yeah. One at a time. We need to see every single one of these characters that is going to die. We have to I, have a scene where we identify them and then kill them. We'll get there. We'll get there. First off, we wanted to talk about the unintentional comedy suicide. <laughs> oh, my God. It is. So the, the, this is I, I started noticing that all of the scenes in this movie are lit to the mood all of them mm -hmm. and a lot of it is filmed inside of a school so they just turned out all of the lights in the hallway <laughs> well uh lisa is uh poking at her locker uh so it's just completely dark even though it's like eleven thirty, and like everybody's at lunch right now but she's just in the darkness all sad she wanders through the school to, it's, and uh <laughs> Then she goes to the roof and she just she just walks right off. It's like um, what was it? The IT crowd. Yes, that one scene where dude is just dude just, just, just stands up and window. just yep. whoop 
It's it's a lot like that. She just she just goes. Yep. Just a zero hesitation. But there's no speed about it either. We see her walk past the entire roof gardening club. <laughs> yeah, there's like 10 people up there gardening for whatever reason. And nobody says anything until she goes over. Like, hey, what are you doing? Are you kind of joined? It's, nobody says a word until it's, <laughs> hey, I think she went over. Never. <laughs> and I'm not even curious why this uh, bright red human being is walking through. Now, <sighs> that part is silly. The one that made me actually laugh out loud is that everyone. To as would happen when somebody slams into a car below, uh, everyone starts getting around and there's discussion of this. A crowd forms. Somebody gets the guidance counselor. But Rachel walks over and upon seeing her body. She gets a migraine and her stand echoes part one starts flinging sound effects through the halls where lockers open with gunshots from doom. The electric <laughs> knife from the original movie, which is just a beat as well as shink, starts playing over and over. Oh, we get so much of that. Oh, the electric knife is like it has <laughs> solos in the finale. <laughs> and then the school counselor has to come out and go, Rachel, don't play with the blood, honey. Come on. Come on. No, no. Get away from the car. <laughs> yeah, she uh, she went over and she touched the blood and she went best blood. But like, sadly, this time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, the school counselor, well, oh. if you've got something else. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. The school, the school counselor this. is, of all people, Sue Snell from the original Carrie, the, uh, the girl who was mean to Carrie and then felt bad about it and then sent Carrie uh, to the to the uh, prom with her, with her boyfriend, with Sue's boyfriend, mm -hmm. thinking it would help, and it almost did, and then it didn't. Yep. Um, but so she is, she is, uh, she is there. You'd think she would have something to say about the eight hundred lockers that just blew open, but apparently not. No, she takes a while to come around to the fact that oh no, it's happening again. In um in the book, I did I did end up uh listening to the audiobook before watching this. They th like a lot of the way uh the book is framed is uh instead of chapter breaks, it's uh sort of alternating with um like books or articles from after the fact. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of a lot of articles that are just like we can't pretend that this is no longer happening. We can't pretend the telekinesis is fake. But I guess in this in in the movie universe we can. Let's let's wait for the revelation, but boy, <laughs> that something related to that is probably one of my biggest you can drive a truck through it plot holes in this <laughs> whole thing. So uh, um Yeah. They're they're Rachel cleaning it up. Rachel doesn't cry. No, no, she's she's sitting in in the counselor's office with the lights are only about half down this time, like about half of them are off. I don't know if the counselor's office has working lights. It always feels like they're in a bunker underground. <laughs> um, Eric is uh, like it looks like he's trying to erase his entry in the sex ledger, but he uh. He wrote it in pen, and so he just draws one single line through it. Cool. Good job. I do love Mark, the head evil football player, later pulling up the journal next to him and going, this your way of trying to fix this? <laughs> it's such a good, well, that was dumb line. It's so weird because, like, they're presented as, like, like I, I would say in general... Uh, outside of peak moments, like a lot of the characters in this movie are like pretty well established, just no like nothing amazing, but it's just like they kind of feel like nor like people a lot of the time. Um, like even the even like the super mean bad boy uh football player, it like for the most part isn't really that mean. 
again, right up until he is, which is... Yeah, in the final act, he has to crank it to 11. The escalation really just feels bizarre. Um, But, like, it, uh, the uh, Eric here, who uh, who is pretty much directly responsible for the suicide, like, he looks like he actually feels bad about it for about a minute. Uh, the, this this will change over time. This conversation is kind of where it changes because it's no for a moment he seems like, oh, I gotta I gotta give back those points. That'll fix this. But then it's immediately, yo, bro, there's evidence against me. I can't play in the game if this goes to the trial. It, it keeps bouncing between I can't play in the game to I'll never play football again to uh statutory rape charges and it just like bounces between the three almost at random yeah from scene to scene the amount of worried he is changes right now he's immediately going she has pictures of me man the police are gonna find that and there's nothing that says the police are gonna find that until a moment later when they find the receipt they absolutely find it um but anyway, Sen- Senpai here, he's going to take care of it. Mm-hmm. And so they, they tap their rings together. Best blood. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how is he going to take care of it? Uh, he's going to drive up to the photo shoot and offer Rachel 30, or the, the photo development booth, and offer Rachel $30 or sex. Mm-hmm. And it's Mark, the evil one, and Jesse, the suave one, but Jesse's just kind of like, hey, man, it's not going to work. Jesse doesn't give a fuck. Jesse does not care if Eric goes down for being a real asshole. He's just the wheels. When, 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 when sex is placed on the table, uh, Rachel goes, I don't think so, because I'm a dyke. And Jesse thinks this is very funny. Jesse starts cracking up. Jesse was laughing as hard as I was because this is just such a 90s line. It was, it was, it's just so, like, that is, that, that's a word you don't really hear nowadays in kind of any context. You basically have to be watching the L word or something that is specifically aimed at a certain audience. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it, like, it's not quite like, uh, like like a middle ages insult it's not like calling somebody yellow or whatever but it is weirdly out of place yeah it just stand it stands right out cuz like a lot of the dialogue could more i i i feel like i say this for every movie that hasn't been made in the last 5 years but a lot of the dialogue just does kind of feel like it could just be in a movie now and then they just drop like one line that wow all right yeah which is this is which is much more uh conversation than that line really deserves i think um <laughs> but it's key to the plot it it ends up well they would have found something they would have found a way they would have but it's part of what sets off the finale true anyway the cops come by for the photos they've also got a suicide note from lisa so they're starting to look into this the note, the note basically just says outright, like, uh, I had sex with this football guy, and then he told me I was just a plaything. And then Sue is just, Sue is just like, do you know what Lisa was referring to? Which, what? Yeah. But she gives the police the photos because it's like, yes, I'm not going to stand in front of evidence in the middle of this. And she was my friend. Yeah, no, this is perfectly reasonable. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I, she and uh, Sue Snell and the sh- sh- new young hot sheriff, they're friends, I guess. The DA. I think this is the DA is starting to come in at this point. Uh, this was definitely this was definitely the sheriff. Okay, I know the DA becomes a figure. The, the, again, this movie is so bad at introducing characters. Yeah, I don't think some of them have names, which is why I just have notes. Some people just have names, but like no, 
<laughs> no, um, uh, t- t- like explanation for like why they're here. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so Sue Snell and the sheriff, uh, Sue is just uh, Sue is like uh, Sue says, well, he is eighteen. Lisa was sixteen. Let's get him on statutory rape, and the sheriff. I I, the sheriff goes. That's a stretch, which I agree. And then Sue Snell's like, "Yeah, well, let's just let's make that stretch," which I also agree with. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. t- sure, yeah. And then then the fucking line. Are you sure that you're not still trying to save a girl that died twenty years ago? What the fuck? Yeah. Why? D- 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 just random insertion of just a reference to and then clips from Carrie. And we we do that all throughout this film because Sissy Spacek refused to do a cameo, but did say, sure, use whatever footage of me you like. So we get... What would she have even done in the movie, though? Like, her character's dead. It's been 23 years. She's probably not going to be... Uh, playing a high school girl. I feel like it solely would have been just a ghost haunting Sue. That's got to be it, right? No one else has any connection to her. The other alternative is, so they keep, especially in the ending, mixing in the they're all going to laugh at you clip. Yeah. Which again, Rachel has no connection to. Oh, I maybe, maybe Rachel gets haunted by Carrie. That's what I was also thinking. That's the only other way. It's a it's a psychic sister thing. Oh, I I I have I have the juice in me, and I can I can sort of see the the, the ghostly resonance of Carrie White. I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, neither is a good idea. But they they were seeking it at some point. Yeah, I guess. So Jesse so- fucks t- Tracy. <laughs> yep and i i he kind of like stumbles out of his van afterwards uh like i i thought he was drunk but then he's just not he was just depressed yeah i did just col- he just like collapses out outside of it i i don't know he he did not have a good time with tracy uh but the f- rest of the football team had a great time standing nearby and yelling at the trailer i guess i don't know they're 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 scoring him yep the next few minutes of the film are very this is narratively convenient yeah it's a, this is like a, a i feel like a fairly reasonable narrative convenience here i guess like yeah th- yeah probably probably these things would not all happen at once but you got to have a story somewhere yeah, this was just one of the ones that really got on my... It's the strangest meet-cute, and so <laughs> many things have to happen to set it up. Yes. Uh, first, Jesse has to be uh, completely done with Tracy, so Tracy uh, announces that, why feel sad about that girl that died? She wasn't anybody. Hey, you want to go to a party? And he's just like, ugh. So he drives her home, just fucking rips ass as soon as she shuts the door, just peels out of there, burning rubber. He cannot get away fast enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's see. Rachel is at home doing dishes. Uh, Every now and then, like, she breaks, she breaks one and, like, everything starts vibrating for a moment. And then the dog runs away. And into the street. Yeah, she dog runs away into the street. I thought uh, the, the the way these scenes came together. Oh no, Jesse's gonna accidentally hit the dog. No, it was just a pig truck. Yep, a, a truck full of pigs, and, and like we see the dog flopping underneath the wheels. Which oh is, yeah, they do that. Okay. And we also see the pigs bouncing around from above just for no reason. It's like we did. <clears throat> we also saw um, Lisa land. Uh, we didn't mention that when uh, 
when she when she when she falls uh it's like a shot from inside the car as she lands face first onto the windshield so like this movie just shows it like whatever it is and that that really works in the finale but in the middle of this film it's like ugh. <laughs> so yeah uh dog's been injured and rachel runs out into the road she's just trying to get anyone to help her out with her dog and finally jesse comes around the bend and this is when her tk really kicks in as she screams stop and his windshield just shatters but he does stop because you know at that point i also would and he's like <laughs> oh shit um let's get your dog to a vet and then and then they meet cute for a while in the vet office while she is just covered in blood She's she she picked up she picked up her dog and just blood all over her. And this this turns into an unofficial first date where they're at a diner and it's like, well, come back tomorrow to see how your dog's doing. And they have a discussion of how they both like alt rock. I love garbage. Uh, Lisa, that was Lisa's favorite band. She loved whatever lead singer's name is. Shirley Manson. I can do that one without even checking. <laughs> and so there's an actual... Again, we're so close to something good with the moment like it used to be I would see her and then someone would turn around. I thought that whole that whole bit was weird. <laughs> you know... A day after her friend died, I get it, especially why she was so worked up about the dog. But she, she's, you know, I used to I used to see Lisa, but then she'd turn around and it, and it wasn't her. And now every time I do, I just know it's never her ever again. In a film that went a little less extra, that's <laughs> a really good setup. That's an actual human moment. But this is the rage, Carrie, too. <laughs> and in two minutes time, we're going to suddenly have her scream and fling a cup across the room right before a coach tells players, drop your pants, sissy boy. <laughs> she, like the, uh, at the end of the date, when they do get home and she has somehow not been... Uh, accosted by the cops for showing up in a diner covered in blood. Um, did they, go, like, go for a handshake, and then it zaps them? Which is, I don't think, is part of the power set. But sometimes it is. The powers are vague. Very ill-defined in this movie. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we have the scene with the counselor who, you know, Sue picks up on the connection to Carrie, starts wondering about things because Rachel gets emotional and a cup flies. Yep. She she spent some time in the mental hospital where uh, Rachel's mother is after the incident. Mm -hmm. And Rachel, Rachel at one point just says, uh, I know I'm 10 times more likely to get it than most people. Does she I think she means schizophrenia. Yes, that's actually what they're discussing without using the word. It it's uh, that that was that was another strange thing, but um, as uh, as the scene goes on, it just sort of like fades out of uh, of Snell's voice, and um, we 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 get we get the sound effects, <laughs> and finally yeah. she just yells, and then the mug just sort of like falls off the table on its own, and Rachel's just like, oh wow, I must have knocked that off. Here you go. Bye. <laughs> yep. But then she stops in the hallway to threaten Eric for a minute. Yeah, boy, that scene doesn't fit at all. Like, she, she kind of doesn't seem like she wants, to, like, vengeance on these people. She just wants absolutely nothing to do with them ever again. Except occasionally she does. Mm-hmm. So, for, uh, I, I'm just going to blame rewrites for that one. Yeah, this, the next 10 minutes or so kind of don't make a lot of sense. And this is where we get the last of the black and white footage is around here. Yeah. Um, 
we get we get like a little bit of uh humanization of the football team because the coach is even meaner than they are uh and as you mentioned the uh he uh mark the main the main bad boy is told to drop his pants uh it just in front of everybody and he the coach just like crouches down and just like sort of stares directly at it which is like basically just sexual assault okay yeah but he just goes i'm just checking to see if there's a tampon there's also a line that it's clearly a joke that doesn't work which is well i saw you half ass in it so i figured i gotta look here it's like what yeah yeah <laughs> whatever he just wanted to see that guy's butt yeah but the cops continue to go after Eric because, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of evidence. One of them comes up to him. I think it's just uh, the sheriff. And he's like, so you say you don't know that girl? No, not at all. He holds up the photo and goes, you want to explain this? So he's cornered. He's backed into something. And at this point, Mark's got an idea. Ugh. The best defense is a good offense. At which point, what I wrote after that was smart decisions time. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, so then we get the towel scene. Yep. Rachel's, uh, Rachel took a shower. She, wore, she put on a towel, apparently didn't dry herself at any point. So she's just dripping wet. Uh, just with a towel on and then um all of the doors start knocking or people start start knocking at all of the doors and there's a phone call and the power's out and a lot of harassment and it's black and white gets yes yeah, she gets a phone call and mark's like trying to do the scream thing it's just like ooh i'm watching you are you wearing a towel but he also does the donald duck voice then randomly he does this. a donald duck voice for some fucking reason I said that yeah. that was weird. That was weird. It was a very good Donald Duck voice, though. No, it's an incredibly good Donald Duck voice, which is why it's so jarring. I guess if you can do it, you just do it at every opportunity. <laughs> Again, I definitely wonder what that first director was working with that he just immediately dropped it. Do you think he filmed the scene with the Donald Duck voice and went, I'm out? <laughs> <laughs> We've done this six times. He won't stop doing the Donald Duck voice. I'm done. <laughs> uh, but no. So this is like Eric just. It's a, it's a lot of like it's harassment, but it's like, ooh, we're going to scare her. Ha ha ha. Until Eric just like pulls out some brass knuckles. He's like, I'm going to do some real damage. And another jock is just like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, everyone else is like, <laughs> uh, Eric. It doesn't get far because he tries to he tries to go in through her window and she has brain powers. So she just uh, smashes it shut on his hand. And I thought this was going to come to something later. Like he, he makes a big deal of it. It's like, is he going to have a broken hand? Will this be a clue or something? Not really. No, she just immediately knows who all these people are and nothing ever comes of it. Yeah. And so her foster parents come home and everyone bolts. And they the foster parents take like a really long time to notice the fucking brick in the living room. At first, the mother holds it up and is like, Oh, like a, that's so cute. <laughs> oh, Rachel left a brick in the living room again. <laughs> Just like when she was 11. <laughs> the foster mother's reaction in this scene is so strange. She, okay, did the foster mother get a name? I know the foster dad is Boyd. I don't know if they say it. She's credited as Emmeline. Okay, I, I don't recall that name ever being said yes i think i would have recalled that name maybe in that one breakfast argument earlier that's gotta be it at most anyway the next day she gives jesse the brush off and was he actually there no no he was explicitly not there yeah yeah he, uh, 
he when when he finds out about it, he gets he gets very mad. Mm-hmm. And this is the point where all the hot girls start getting mad and come into the plot. Yes. Let me let me see the 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 glasses girl Monica, uh, as uh, so what what what's going on is at school. Um, Jesse walks up to Rachel. She's like, "Hey, why weren't you at our date last night?" And she's just like, uh, to, to "Fuck you." Yeah, on, on account of you know the the thing that happened. Yeah, what all your friends did to me. Tracy and Monica see them talking off in the distance. And she's just, uh, Monica is just like, oh, you're caviar and she's cheese whiz, which what? No. And no. They just, they just hate her. It's just uh, another one of those, just the bullies bully. They just, they just hate her. The end. Yeah, we could just stick with the football guys, but I guess someone wanted to go. We need women to be mean to the female protagonist. Otherwise, this feels real ugly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, they, yeah, they, uh, let me see. <laughs> Rachel, uh, after a while, we cut back to uh, the conversation. So we didn't, we didn't need to hear it. We didn't need to hear the, uh, hey, your football buddies just like, shook down my house last night i wasn't part of it and all that and she you know you're so well by the time we cut back it's you're supposed to date girls like tracy and he's just like her Ugh. which is i i thought was very funny he just he cannot stand tracy it's just like at no point is it, 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 it does he even like express the sl like he hates her. He hates Tracy like Tracy hates. I'm sorry. The uh, the logo of the movie is on my screen. So I keep almost saying Carrie instead of Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> you could find replace her name. It's fine. <laughs> Carrie, too. Yeah. The rage. And at this point, Jesse has just completely done a 180 and he hates all his friends. Yeah. We're all friends, Jesse. No, we just grew up together. They they have they have an argument in the in the locker room. Uh it's just like uh she's a skank. No uh uh huh. All of that. And he does pretty much say, why are we all sticking up for Eric, a dude who got a girl killed? Yeah. Good question. Yeah, really is. So uh, it, it, while this is happening, uh, Rachel is taking a test. Uh, we all we all know where this is going because uh, Sue Snell is giving her some silly true and false statements like uh, sometimes my thoughts assume the form of a giant insect. And it's like we know where this is going. We know what one of these questions is going to be mm -hmm. uh, on the way there. It's uh, I, d d d the furry animal crawls on my face at night. And Rachel's just like, true. I have a dog. Ugh. Yep. It's very funny. I, I did actually laugh at that. And so, of course, as these questions go on, suddenly it's sometimes I can move things with my mind. And Rachel's just like, nope, I'm done here. <laughs> Bye. Yep. <laughs> and they, they they tussle a little bit and the snow globe that happens to be on her desk just explodes for no reason. Yep. That was OK. I didn't rewatch the movie. And so I only read the book. Mm -hmm. Was she there? Was Sue Snell there in the movie? Like, did she show up at the prom? Because in the book, in the book, she explicitly did not. She doesn't, but she has PTSD about it, which is where that extra stinger at the end comes in. Okay. I presume you know about that bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I've seen the movie. I just it's just been a while. Yeah, they, but yeah, they they do that fake out with it. But yeah, no, she's she's not there, which is why when the whole building burns down, she's fine. OK. So uh, Jesse and Rachel finally have that date. The 90s alt rock references are just <laughs> overkill at this point. Well, you could say it's raining references. 
she wished she could be one of the shiny, happy people with Jesse. That one stuck out to me. That's, that was a fairly common one. Eh. It was, it's not a good one. I, I agree with you going, Ugh, but I've, I've heard it. It's 1999. That song has not been relevant for a while. <laughs> I did, they probably said it on Buffy at some point. <laughs> also probably true. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's, then these two get hot and heavy in the car in a way that you just don't see a lot uh, in you know major films these days. And speaking of things you wouldn't really see in a film these days, the mental institution scene. I, 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 I was wondering if you were going to make that transition there. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. This is this is a thing. Um, yeah. So uh, if you've ever played Phantasmagoria 2, uh, it's basically this. Uh, they, they are crazy and they are wandering about in all directions doing crazy things and uh, it, let me see what I wrote here. Wacky mental patients wander around her in a miasma of cringe. Mm-hmm. Uh, though, t- to be fair, I did laugh really hard at this one giant man who's just, like, cradling a fire extinguisher like it's a baby. Yeah. I, I thought that was very good. I don't, <laughs> I don't feel good about laughing at it, but it was, it was, it was uh, very funny. A couple of people are playing it. I don't want to say more subtle, but they're not they're not as extra about it. Yeah, it's like I said, it's Phantasmagoria 2 or like Hellraiser 2 was a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> OK, Hellraiser 2 at least had the upstairs part where your people were like more or less realistic. And then you just take an elevator down to the screaming dungeon. Yeah, no. I, I still think that film holds up, but also it is of an era. <laughs> and I get that. So here's speaking of eras. Yeah. So Su- Sue Snell uh, is there to speak to Rachel's mother. Mm hmm. Barbara. Barbara. Sure. <laughs> they, uh... So this is where we get the revelation that Rachel is biologically Carrie's half sister because didn't need that no no and again this also means that for at least 20 years her daddy has just fucked his way through this town yeah I mean, that, and that uh, okay it, it, the book kind of kind of uh would uh, uh, allow that interpretation it's i feel like he sowed his wild oats a bit Okay, makes sense. It it do, it do, he, a, a a reason this doesn't make sense is mm-hmm. the he, like um in the book he died shortly after Carrie was born. It doesn't really make sense that he's still alive considering how that whole home situation turned out. Yeah. So it, so t- suddenly 20 years later he has another daughter that okay yeah sometime in the 60s this guy gets someone pregnant with carrie again the book is like and he's gone before she dies which is 1976 but in this film in 1986 Rachel Lang is alive and another bastard of this dude, which means that guy would have had to sometime in the very late seventies or early eighties done this again with a woman who was the same age as, you know, Carrie's mother. And like, they just, she's just, it's, it's a genetic thing. It doesn't have to be literally the same guy. Like they, they explicitly say it's genetic in the movie. And the movie explicitly says, oh, yeah, same daddy as Carrie White, but we don't go talking about that because you know how people feel about that in this town. <laughs> and, and, it's especially, and three years later, it was like, oh, you're, you were Carrie's daddy? Oh, oh, my. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's, let's talk about Jesus together. I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it's very stupid and very convenient. It's dumb. It's, again, 
there's a lot of plots you could excise from this movie and it would make it a tighter thing and probably a better film. This is up there. The entire Sue Snell storyline just could have just been not there at all. Yeah. But it has to be there because this isn't this isn't uh, the rage Rachel. This is the rage Carrie too. Rachel's rage. Yeah. And and she's explicitly Carrie too. Yes. C- Carrie one point five. Anyway, at this point we have our time skip. Yeah. Um. Sue takes Rachel to the rubble of the old school. And <laughs> it's like, and somebody, somebody in the uh, production was probably like, why would that still be there? And so there's a line put in there that says, I don't know why they don't tear this thing down. <laughs> it, I did laugh. <laughs> and Rachel's just like, uh, d- okay. And just kind of leaves. She's not really interested in this. Yeah, no, I also probably wouldn't buy the guidance counselor telling me you're the sequel to a demonic hell beast that raised an entire <laughs> generation of our town. It got out of control. It's the same town. <laughs> God. Mark's parents lean on the DA and we make Eric's case go away. Okay, uh, okay, this scene was... So it's Eric and his dad, who is a lawyer. They establish his dad. And on the other side, there's the sheriff and a woman. Is she? That is the deputy DA. Okay. I was like, is this the principal? Because we didn't, we don't see the print. We maybe don't see the principal. There is Jay who walks in, (laughs) you know, Jay, every, everybody, everybody respects Jay. A fun stoner. <laughs> no, he's he's his business. He's the business Jay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his business is Jay's, all right. Yeah, no, it's it's just it's Jay, and everybody looks at him, and he's just like, oh, <laughs> don't mind me. And finally, <laughs> then finally, he's like, let's blue sheet this one for lack of evidence. It's just, I, I don't know who he is. I don't know why he has this authority. And he doesn't appear in the movie again. It's no, it's just, this just writes that whole plot off. Yeah, there it goes. Bye. And now he's he's in the game, even though he's got a fucked up hand. That's not, that doesn't matter either. No, it, it doesn't come to anything. So, the plot then comes up where we're going to get Jesse and Rachel to the party. Yes. Oh boy, does it take a while to get both of them at that party. Oh, God, yeah. (laughs) It was a a whole ordeal getting them there. I feel like we can speed run this bit. Do you mind? Uh, uh, sure. Go for it. Tell me if you think I should slow down on here, but I I have just a bullet-pointed list. So, Rachel begins... Clearly debating, maybe, you know, gussying herself up. She's starting to think about maybe giving it up to Jesse. And at this point, Monica shows up while Rachel is getting eyeballed in the department store as a possible (laughs) shoplifter. I do like that. I do like that they're just like, the Hot Topic girl is looking at our lipsticks. This seems suspicious. Okay, I will will slow this down uh, to... uh... Por- uh, le- let's let's discuss my own similar experience to this, which was not makeup related. Okay. Uh, I was moving into an apartment with uh with with a guy, mm-hmm. uh, and we were t- uh we were just you know looking around town looking for furniture, and we see a sign for a place which is no longer there. Uh, thank God. Oh, we see a <laughs> sign for a place called Sofa Barn, and so we look at that. We're like. That's probably within our wheelhouse. Let's go check it out. Mm-hmm. And Sofa Barn was all two thousand dollar plus sofas. Uh there was a the person uh in charge of the sofa barn, uh, the the sofa barn uh floor experience was wearing a suit, and he watched us every goddamn second that we were there in the sofa barn. 
Like, why, why would you call this place that? You can't put a sofa in your pocket. What the hell? I d- yeah, like, what, what the fuck were we going to do? <laughs> just to knock him out and take one? I, it didn't. It, it was so weird. Are we just going to walk up and piss on him? That's way wilder than, <laughs> like, I get the makeup department giving you the third eye. Sure, that can be pocketed easily. And does. The sofa barn. Sofa barn, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, for, for some reason, they went out of business. I don't know. Weird. <laughs> yeah, with customer service like that. You, you walked out of a Mission Hill episode with that story. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, Monica. Monica at this point does say uh, she she's she's getting good with Carrie too, and she's like, you know, a lot of people don't actually like Tracy. I think she's a Melrose Place super bitch. Yes, and that reference actually works. Sure, a lot a lot, a lot of super bitches on Melrose Place. Oh yes, I've been doing a rewatch and. Holy shit. <laughs> I, I, I never forgot really, how quickly... I never really watched that. Should I? You know what? It's incredibly campy in a good throwback way. And also... I like to, I liked, the, I liked Desperate Housewives. Should I watch Melrose Place? Oh, God, yes. Okay. Oh, God, yes. There we go. <laughs> yeah, no. You're, you're going to love it by the time that... One of them is so pissed off at everyone that they burn down the fucking complex. And that's season two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very good. It has a lot of carry energy, come to think of it. Uh, so, yeah. The, you know, there is going to be a party after the game. So maybe, maybe you want to go to that? You know, I hear you're uh, with Jesse. And so we begin. And... Eventually, the two of them <laughs> spend a night out, and Jesse and Rachel have young love, and it's very tender, and he mutters, I love you, while she's asleep on him. And then you see kabuki shadow puppets behind them <laughs> through a curtain. Oh, oh no, they're so spooky. <laughs> the scene is shot in this very tender way, and then there are just people tiptoeing around in the background. It's really funny. <laughs> mm. But she comes home the next morning, and uh, she's grounded for a week because she stayed out for a night and didn't call home. It like like they care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her parents, her foster parents, suck ass. But you know, this is them. I can't argue with this one. I would say you probably ground the kid who vanishes for a night. But also, like, what are what are they going to do? Like, are, how are they going to enforce that? She just leaves. Yeah, she does just bounce later when it comes time for the party. Uh, we got so much football here. Okay, we do need to talk about the, the climax of the Sue Snell plot. Sure, this, is, this was pretty good. Where she, where she sneaks Barbara out of the asylum for no reason. Yeah, she's. It, it's like, uh, if if you've ever watched Alias, it's shot like exactly like that. Uh, she there. There's a magnetic lock to get into the asylum, and she just like sticks sticks a little bit of gum on there. And I don't think that that's how that works, but it does. This is what people do to the laundry room at my apartment so they don't have to bring their key. This is not how you <laughs> get people in and out of a fenced off mental ward. It is a giant magnet and she just has like one one sticks worth of gum. But when <laughs> when, when she does leave, uh, it opens up and it's just like this d disgusting just uh like like an entire handful's worth of gum in there but uh no she uh she she goes in she's like hey we need to let uh we need to tell Rachel about her dad you need to tell her because she didn't believe me and <laughs> there's like uh, there's there's this one particularly good shot where um she uh 
she distracts the um the secretary or the the desk clerk uh for like one second and real mom just crouch runs out of there just bolts yes <laughs> it's like it's like a five second shot total also the music for this scene is a busted casio keyboard <laughs> a lot of it is yeah but this one is the most egregious because it feels like we're trying to do axel f from beverly hills cop but the bootleg version <laughs> that we don't have to pay for the beverly hills cop theme that's what's happening right now <laughs> we, we spent all of our money on backstabbing liar <laughs> anyway yeah the, um so the they win the we win the game jesse wins the game of course woo yeah touchdown J J rachel uh, as mentioned she had left um grounding and went she runs into the field for the final play he gets a touchdown did she use her brain powers i don't know they point at each other <laughs> clearly she didn't because we didn't hear the electric knife okay that's fair that's fair. She she could have though. She was ready. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, Ma, um, Je Jesse is held back by the uh, the football scout. Yeah. And Monica is uh, goes. Hey, uh, so we have we have Deborah here. Deborah's here, by the way. Remember Deborah? Uh, let's. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a ride there with Deborah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And so the, the in a kind of an amazing uh shot uh, Monica is working the pedals Deborah takes the wheel <laughs> while uh while Monica changes her shirt and puts on mascara They're not slowing down at all Yeah This is absolutely the way that so many PSAs end poorly for the teenage cast but no this is just a background gag here. While a uh, backstabbing liar by Mono P Mono Puff plays. Yeah. Um, I was I, I as I, I I didn't really pay attention to the song choice for the most part. I I have to wonder if they were all this on the nose because she is getting backstabbed by a liar right now. Not really. Because if you look at the actual soundtrack album, most of them are pretty generic tracks that are just like, I don't think half of them even play during the film. <laughs> I'm just thinking of um, on the Vampire Diaries issue, which has come up um, there. Uh, the main character who uh, had had several accidents uh, involving cars on bridges uh, and <laughs> she was now she is now a vampire and due to a plot shenanigans, she no longer has emotions. And the song I Don't Care is playing at a party. <laughs> and uh, among the lines in that song is, I drove your car into a bridge. So. Guess I know how that ends. It could, it, it could be like that. Yeah. That show was so good until it wasn't. <laughs> so. We're at 25 minutes left and we're still not at the party. <laughs> yeah, the, par the boy, the party goes fast. Oh, yeah. Um, because Jesse has been held back, this means his pals who now want to fuck with him because the talent scouts looking at him. Uh, by the way, Jesse's had a few scenes where he's just kind of telling the rest of the football team to fuck off. We're definitely not going to be friends after high school. So they they're kind of just getting ready to set him up, too. Yeah, they they had a bit of a, a of a like a haha. -ha, I guess we I guess we can still be friends kind of scene, but it that was a, I think that was after the plan began. So yes, you know, and they have graffitied his car and slashed his tires while he was busy with the scout. And just in case you didn't get it, uh, well, it, it they 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 made it look like the other team did it, but just in case you didn't get it when uh. Tracy drives him off. Uh, she she <laughs> drops an entire can of spray paint into the parking lot. Mm -hmm. just, in, just in case. Having pulled up just in time to get Jesse a ride. So she, she gives Jesse a ride to her home where she changes. Uh, 
yeah. did a very funny scene where she's like, oh, okay, well, what do you think about this dress? Oh, I don't know. But what about this underwear that I'm wearing? She takes off her dress and she's just like, what? Uh. Yeah. He, he has a complete, I don't know, man, <laughs> expressions. Like, yeah. She gets pissed. Do you, do you look nice, I guess? I don't know. Yep. I've already seen it. <laughs> I I have love now. What are you doing? Mm hmm. Rachel is at the party first and all the rest of the team is there. And we see that there is this big projection screen that is just reflecting one TV over like seven monitors everywhere. When she walks in, they do do the uh, the whole saloon. Uh, oh, our main cowboy just walked in. Let's all stop and stare at her. Mm -hmm. this mansion is a nightmare by the way <laughs> it's it's kind of it's it's a fire hazard turns out not even the fire hazard part there's an indoor pool can you imagine a what that moisture is going to do to everything especially if sunlight can get in here and heat it up i thought the and b just the smell of chlorine trapped in a room. I thought the pool was outside, but I would have to look at it again. Is, uh... I'm pretty sure it's in the house because doors seal outside of it. Well, there's there's the big glass doors and then there's the pool beyond that. So. Could be it, it, I like it's it's a it's an insane house, so it's entirely possible. I, I'm just trying yeah, to re I, I'm trying I to remember and I can't look it up because that they took this movie off of like every fucking streaming service over the new year. And <laughs> yeah, both of us are the most money this film has made in about 10 years because we both rented it in two days. Yeah. I had, I had to rent it twice in order to finish it. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's, it's real hard to get through this one at parts. Oh, I, I've just, I was just like busy and tired. Gotcha. Gotcha. So yeah. Um, also, also there's voodoo, the, voodoo is a, a 24 hour uh, rental period it was uh, voodoo sucks, especially on desktop, turns out. Yes. But yeah, it was it's a 24 hour period. And it's like, well, I could watch half of the movie tonight, but it, if I do that, it'll run out before I can go do this again. So. So there was a lot there was a lot of back and forth and finally I just rented it twice. Yeah, I get it. Voodoo sucks. Anyhow, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I I'm, I'm <laughs> go go ahead to let us know about this amazing party. Yeah, so there's the the quantum pool might be indoors, might be adjacent. Pool 2, hyper pool. Oh, imagine if this movie had the budget <laughs> of a cube. Hyper carry. <laughs> oh my god, I'd, I'd actually really love to see how bad that got. Anyway, um, there's upstairs. We don't see any bedrooms in this place, which is weirder, because you'd think that people would be doing something. We also don't see a kitchen. We, we mostly just see the party zone. There, there's just the the big living room party zone, and there is like a hallway that they go to later once things pop off, but we don't see much of that. Yeah. And there's upstairs through this weird staircase that's next to the pool, which is why I think it's indoors. Because remember, they're all trapped inside and they keep going back and forth from the pool. There's like multiple stairways and catwalks. Yeah. This place feels like when I worked at Fry's Electronics, we had two <laughs> floors. The second was basically just employee access around the building. There was no way up there for anyone who didn't work in the place. That's what the upper level of this place feels like. This is just the parent zone, but the whole place is just built for parties otherwise. Ah, uh, So yeah, everyone is, you know, teasing her a bit. We see there's a video camera, and eventually, everyone starts talking about the game. Yeah, he won the game. What's the game? 
No, 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 not that not game. Not that game. The other game. The game that you're in. Yep. Like, uh, uh, right up until that moment, it almost, like, it seems like they could have just, like, dropped the whole thing entirely and just been friends. Yeah. Like, but no, no, they don't do that. No. So, <sighs> the, the game that you're in, Rachel, uh, how many points did Jesse get? And they they chuck the scorebook at her, the sex scorebook, and she immediately realizes, oh fuck. So she she is no longer having a good time, so she stares at it, and everything everything gets really fucking intense at this point. This is this is definitely the uh, the uh, hey maybe you should not if if you if if you have. Uh, if you have serious issues with uh, these sorts of uh, with, with sexual assault and whatnot, maybe don't don't go here because like they start yeah. go uh, like um, Eric, who uh, disappeared for a bit. He shows up and to let everyone know, oh, I just about split Lisa in two and it was four points and she and then she killed herself. So who cares? Yeah. And how many points did Jesse get for for fucking you? And as this is going on, the football game is intercut with the footage that they took of uh of Rachel having sex the night before. Yep. And it's playing on all the TVs in a very so like like the the actual scene itself was shot like extremely tastefully and this is just like just some straight up like weird voyeur pornographic shit it's 8 millimeter territory yeah it's it is intense yeah and it isn't helped by the fact that there's this weird projection display that it's reflected across seven monitors with. Yeah, it's everywhere. Like, everywhere you look. There it yep. is. And, hey, how many points did Jesse get? Oh, well, 30 points, because you said you're a dyke. So she get, he gets... He got the conversion. He got the conversion. And then Monica, for some fucking reason, goes, oh, she, she should get extra points being that she's so skanky what like we, yeah. we already we we already got there why where where are you going who, who are you again Ugh. and at this point she is being bounced around in a circle of all the jocks who we didn't mention it Everyone but Jesse shaved their head before the big game, so they just have big skinhead energy right now. Yep. I'm sure by random coincidence. Mm hmm. And then we start playing the they're all gonna laugh at you clip as all the footage starts spinning. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you mean they're all gonna laugh at you transmix? <sighs> yeah, that's what it's called on the soundtrack. I, I don't think that's actually what it's called, but I... I I keep calling it that. <laughs> uh, uh it's so bad. It, it uh, it's it's it we, you if you ever watched the original movie, you'll know they're all going to laugh at you. Yeah. I don't think either of us can hit the pitch, but yeah, it's it's just that clip over and over. Which nobody present heard that. For what it's worth, the the song is actually called Crazy Little Voices, theme from The Rage Carry 2. Sure. So it's real close. <laughs> so that's playing and it's 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 awful. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, uh, we're not going to really be able to hear the soundtrack very much for very much longer because it is time for the rage. And this is where the powers stop making any sense. None. As her cool tattoo begins growing all over her body. <laughs> Yep, it, 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 the ro uh, she uh she gets rose stems all over everything, all over her skin. Uh, the heart tattoo was beating for a second, which one of the jock sees and is like, "What the?" Which none of that makes sense, but it doesn't matter because before we get a, a chance to dwell on that, all of the glass windows and doors explode, 
And this is where suddenly the movie has a budget. Like, this initial explosion is not for effect. She just straight up decapitates multiple people with these shards before slamming the doors shut around it. Yeah, it it's a it, like the the glass explosion is really good. Like honestly, it it looks it looks really fantastic. Like uh, like bad to be in, obviously. Yeah. Uh but um <laughs> there is one shot where this this one of the guys just has like a shard of glass in his throat and it's just spraying right on the face of some random girl, which I did laugh at really hard. Uh, there's a couple of really good, funny kills in here because they, you know, much like evil speak, they expect you to just be like, no, nah, she gets this. She deserves this. Yeah, it's time. Yep. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. This is when Sue and Barbara show up at the party, which they know they're at for some reason. Uh, they they ran into some band geek earlier, and it was it was stupid. Yeah. Um, it was just a random. What was she, what was she doing with Monica? That's weird. We need to go right away to that party, which of course of course it's bad. And and then they just fucking kill her. <laughs> yeah. Sue is looking at the peephole, which that's not what you do from the outside, and she's buzzing the doorbell. And Brad is running for the door. I got to get out of here. I'm going to leave everyone behind. Rachel flings a fireplace poker through his skull, but for some reason, she shoves it through so far that it also just kills Sue instantly. Good thing we had you in our movie. Like, what What was the point of any of this? Like, like I, 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 even, even assuming that uh, the whole point is to get rachel's mother into this party well we'll get there yeah that also didn't go anywhere <laughs> no um de de let's see deborah dies the death of a million cds yes how, how dare how dare you deborah she cd heads her to death i love it <laughs> <laughs> oh and uh her mother Okay, so she's been telekinetically holding all the doors shut, I guess only from the inside, because her mother just walks up past the dual corpses stapled to this door and comes in and just closes it behind her. <laughs> <laughs> just gently. And then when she sees her daughter covered in tattoos, murdering people with psychic powers, she collapses on the ground and starts saying, oh, it's my fault. It's my fault. It's my fault. Having a breakdown we'll we'll get we'll get back to her after some more carnage mm -hmm. upstairs some of the remaining jocks and uh monica are just like we need anything yeah it's mark and eric and monica the our, our main villains so they they go to the harpoon cabinet which they have uh, just a cabinet full of spear guns. And so they, and Monica's like, I'll take that. Thank you very much. I like to think, based on what's in this, whoever Mark's dad is just fucking loved Tomb Raider because there's so many spear <laughs> guns and a flare gun. I, uh, well, you, you need them if you need to, I, I, I don't know, kill, kill sharks while pushing buttons on walls. <laughs> That's kind of how this house works, though. So Rachel Rachel notices them and follows. There, there's a bit of a chase where she's she's looking cool. Everything's on fire. Uh, the the two boy uh Mark and Eric just body slam a glass door. Yeah, just jump right through it. Which uh, I I guess I guess glass doesn't hurt people now. We'll just we'll just forget about that thing that just happened. It's great because they're all armed at this point, but they just keep running and never decide to shoot. Yep. And they so they they come up by the pool and Monica is like, OK, time for this bitch to die or something. And mm -hmm. she's about to pull the trigger. And then 
uh, Chekhov's glasses explode right into her face. And it's really gross. I got to say, I love that. That's not a kill you get with telekinesis <laughs> often enough. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, it's like like the the entire setup of this character is just she's wearing glasses and you just yeah. think it's just like a thing. It's, it's just like a an identifier. And then they actually they brought it back. So, you know, good on them. Yeah. So so she screams and panics and harpoons Eric's dick off. Yes. Which we just see floating as he collapses and dies. <laughs> and that's it. That's 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 those two. Mm-hmm. The not amazingly not the most ignoble death that we'll be seeing. No. <laughs> uh, so, so she uh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. You first. Okay, yeah, she she disarms Brad with telekinesis, but then her mom distracts her with Rachel. It's like, mom? And she eats a flare to the gut because she's no longer focused on the guy in front of her. <laughs> uh, of course, when you have a big flaming thing in your gut, you leap into the pool. And she telekinetically starts pulling the cover over, then grabs him under the water. I, I kind of think that the whole, she kind of pops out of the water screaming, and I, I feel like that's a sort of a, it's sort of half a reference to that that stinger from the first movie. I think it definitely fits. Which I, I, I kind of keep remembering it as like she she's jumping out her whole body, but it's really just like her arm just sort of gently coming out of the out of there. Yeah, it's just it's just a little jump scare with the arm. It might have been like a super loud scream in the Carrie remake. I don't remember. Speaking of super loud sound effects at the end of this, we'll get there. Yeah. So um, the, the, the cover is closing. Um, she drags Mark under and it, it while he's still trying to get his bearings, it just kind of smacks him in the skull. Which I did laugh at. Yeah. So he goes under and... Now he is trapped under there, which is extremely unsafe. Mm -hmm. Um, so she she has she has the harpoon now. <laughs> yep. So, so she cuts she cuts a hole in the tarp on her end. But he doesn't have one of those, so that does that doesn't work so good. And that that that's it. That's our uh, that's our jocks and mean girl too done. Yep. The the party is like. Like everybody still in the building is dead. And then Jesse and Monica arrive and they enter this building that is on fire and wildly unsafe. <laughs> and it's just uh and Tracy just she she's looking around like before she actually gets a chance to do anything. Uh oh well well no, no, first uh before that, uh Rachel is up on the pool deck and that's when her mom shows up and cradles her. And she's like, Oh, my, my beautiful, wonderful daughter. And, uh, we established earlier that, uh, sh her mom sees hallucinations because she waved to a person that wasn't there. Ha ha. She's crazy. Yeah. Um, and so her mom picks her up and she's like, wait, this is some weird young adult with face tattoos and not my adorable baby child. This is just someone with the devil in them. I'm out. Yeah. And so she just just kind of leaves the movie. Yeah, I actually had to check my notes and go, did she die? No, she just walks out. And that's when Tracy and Jesse arrive and just some uh, some wreckage just falls right on Tracy. <laughs> it's incredibly. <laughs> she doesn't even say a word. She Jesse is looking around and she just suddenly dies instantly yeah, just boom so okay ah uh, so she she has she has nothing to do in this finale so there she goes yeah <laughs> i i spent a lot of time laughing at this finale someone when they were editing this together <laughs> knew just what also this is this is trash this movie is trash this is the trash everyone's looking for Let's go for it. <laughs> At some point during all this carnage, it doesn't really matter when, we cut outside to the the stoners just sitting on the roof of a car, looking at the building 
completely engulfed in flames. Like, I think there's like blood coming out of it, at least at one point in the front of it. And the guy just goes, man, we're missing such a killer party. I hate that guy so much. He, he this, this guy pops up every now and then in the movie and he's just the worst. He's, he's the American pie nerd. Uh, did, did, he's like, he, he, at one point earlier, he was like, love is 15 seconds of squishing noises. <laughs> I hate him. I have to say, <laughs> I don't think this character even gets a name, but... Arnie. Arnie, okay. Arnie. It's so weird that this movie has such a large cast, but other than Rachel, every named child, and other than Rachel <laughs> and this stoner, is either a murderous jock or a murderous meat girl. There's no other innocent individual anywhere in this, with the exception of Jesse. If, if they're not murderous now, they will be. It's just so odd that we have so many extras and we never do anything with a single other clique or classmate. I know I already said the film's overstuffed, but... You'd think it would be because they were, like, making this school have anything other than supervillain councils. Like, she doesn't, Ra Rachel doesn't have a friend group. She has a friend. Yeah. And th th then she doesn't. Yep. And that's just nothing. Not, not even, like, people that just are kind of okay, okay with this weird, this weird poor girl. No, they just loathe her. Like, you'd think she would have hung out with these outcasts or something. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like they were having a good time at the party for a minute there. Yeah. They, like, they seriously could have just been like, hey, let's just, let's just let's just be friends with her now. Fuck this. Yeah, it's it's the end of the year. You know, if Eric set things off because he was an asshole, that would make sense. But no, it is straight up the Legion of Doom. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good pun, and it's, it's not working. It's fine. They're the Legion of Goon after they shave their heads. Uh, the Legion of Zoomers? I don't know. They wouldn't be Zoomers. Nah. Ah, well. Anyhow, Jesse, Jesse is still in the burning building. Yep. Uh, so he sees he sees the tape and manages to put two and two together really quickly, I think. Yeah. It's just like, okay, well, everything's on fire. This is there's this video of us fucking on the TV. Prob she probably did this. Yeah. For what it's worth, he is he, all he is saying is we need to get out of this building. Let's leave. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> but let let's go. It's it's it not even like not condemnation or like, wow, you did this. Yeah. Nothing, none of that. It's just hey, cool tats. You got some tight tats. Mm -hmm. It's just like let's let's just go. Let's let's get out of here. Let's stop this. And so <sighs> he he tells her he loves her, and she's just like liar. And then he says it on the TV while she's asleep, and she just she looks at that and goes, oh, okay. This is my favorite bit. He says it on the tape. And then I don't know if this is supposed to be her powers or just it's I, skipping. It, has to, it yeah. has to be. It just keeps rewinding. I love you. I love you. Over and over for about five cycles. I mean, that that part. Sure. Her, her, she's using her brain powers on the rewind button. Done. <laughs> <sighs> the part that doesn't make sense is when it just starts zooming in on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And 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 so they stare at each other for a minute and then the roof falls on her. Yeah, just like happened to Tracy, immediately it collapses on her. But the thing that really wins her over is he just starts trying to move this big chunk of flaming rubble off her. And, like, he's getting mauled by it. Yep, his entire arm is on fire. Yeah. And so, 
in, in the last good laugh of the movie, <laughs> she uses her powers to fling him over the railing onto the pool. And it's. It is a dummy launch from a catapult. It's so good. <laughs> He he lands in the pool, but the tarp is over it, so he's still on fire. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's so good. <laughs> and, and, that, and that that's it. She just kind of dies there. She's consumed with the flames of rage. Carrie too. And we get a one year later. Yep, and this 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 almost exactly is where my second rental ran out, and I was just like, I'm not spending another four dollars on this. Yeah, <laughs> so I had to go look it up on YouTube and then ask, was there anything after this? But uh, yeah, we see that he's you know he's been burned, but he's at college. He took her dog because clearly he couldn't trust it with those poor people. Well, they they didn't give a fuck about that dog. No, they didn't. They explicitly did not. Yep. And he's he's studying. He he nods off. We see that uh, he's got a photo of the two of them, which when was this taken? I uh, don't know. Yeah, I don't, I, it, at no point could that have happened during the movie that that occurred to me. Yeah. Maybe maybe at the maybe at the lake house, they had like a, a thing set up and it got developed it later. He had her ghost develop it. Yes. <laughs> he, he went, he, he, <laughs> he, he started dating her. So uh, when she dies, her job is his now. <laughs> That's kind of how this town works. <laughs> oh, but he falls asleep and he just has a nightmare vision of her. Yep. So she's, she's in, uh, she, she's there. She's wearing, Okay. Earlier in the movie, before before the uh, lake house date, she uh, she put on this outfit, which is just like the worst. Yeah, it's this blue. It's like this pale blue dress ish thing. It's it's kind of like a big shirt, really. Um, it's got sleeves that are like two centimeters long and completely sheer, and like a an entire rectangle cut out over her sternum but not like not like enough to show anything it's it's just there it's just like here's my collarbones but about half of them it looks it, it's miserable it's a bootleg i dream of genie costume yes and this this is what he, this this is the outfit he dreams her in so he he runs over and they kiss and then she screams and shatters okay you say she screams, but it's an eagle sound effect. Okay, she howls. Yes. It's so funny because the last thing we hear in the movie is just that stock evil eagle sound effect you've heard in so many bad movies of a bird coming out of the sky. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and the, the, do the dog looks at him after he wakes up. And the dog's just like, what the fuck, dude? Yep. But boy, why, are, why is this movie still going on? She had a voice, you know. So Jesse stares into the mirror, and he also has another mirror behind him, so it's like a Hall of Mirrors illusion. And then credits. And the movie ends. I don't know. I, I, the clear flaws major issues with the movie but i i did enjoy most of it again i think it's just on the verge of not being tasteful but being a very solid b movie <laughs> if you just cut one subplot it could be a myriad of them it could be we cut the meat girls it could be we cut everything about sue and the asylum that's my vote yeah just remove one of them and you get this down to a tight 90, and you've got a much better film. I, I do wonder how much of it is just, like, similar to uh, the big blockbusters of today, where they have to film all of the cool action scenes first, because the effects take so long. Mm -hmm. 
I have to wonder if like they had to do they had to do the party early and so once that was set up like pretty much had to uh make all make everything else work with it it's possible i don't know but yeah that was the rage carry too the soundtrack is so bad i ca- i cannot emphasize enough you have just look it up look like look up like main theme the rage carry too it is just the most midi plinking i have ever heard in a movie like if you think if you watched the original silent hill movie and thought boy the game music doesn't really fit here it's 10 times worse than that yeah at least akira yamaoka composes scores that's not (laughs) what we when i say it sounds like a casio explosion in the jailbreak sequence it's not far off so uh yeah what are we gonna do next time for the final episode of this limited series cheap scares which i definitely announced as a limited series and didn't decide later that i had no time to do this if it comes back it's season two baby (laughs) i would say don't expect a season two but i'm not i'm not gonna say never um yeah it's just no time (laughs) i'm the optimist we'll see but it but you know it's been it's been fun it's been fun i i think i think we uh as as like a proof of concept for uh like can we do a podcast i think the answer is yes and you know some some neat movies some fun stuff some some dogs (laughs) well but overall it's been pretty good so how are we going out We are going out with something that I have been mentioning since I think our first episode, and I was surprised you hadn't seen. I'm going to make you watch Mandy. All right. So, Mandy. (laughs) Uh, What I know about Mandy is uh, it's got the Nicolas Cage in it. Mm Mm-hmm. It's probably a movie. Mm Mm-hmm. That's about it. It is, um... It is the film... Before he got back into Art House, like last year's Pig, where um, Nicolas Cage reminded a lot of us that after so many years of slumming it, he was an award-winning actor, and it's still a fucking excellent horror film to boot. All right. uh, What in general is it about, or is it, like, indescribable? Mandy is the story of a lumberjack and his wife in the 80s. They live in the mountains. And then a creepy cult comes to town and things go wrong. Okay. So so a premise that could be any one of a thousand movies, but it's not one of those. It's Mandy. It's Mandy. Okay. And um, it's one of my favorite films of all time at this point. Fantastic. We will check that out next time. And, uh, We will see you one last time. Goodbye. Goodbye.